Kia ora koutou. Here's another question that I think is the excellence question from question three of this year's complex numbers paper. Sorry about the bad quality of the question. I've just grabbed it from a screenshot because I haven't got an official copy of the paper yet. So we're told that Z is a non-zero complex number and we're told to use A plus BI for it. And we've got I over Z plus three over the conjugate of Z is equal to one. Now, you know, usually I would just straight away substitute in my A plus BI and I can do that here, but I'm just going to stop and notice here that if I add those two fractions together, the common denominator that I get is going to be nice, right? Because z times its conjugate is going to be a real number. So the first thing that I did here is I actually didn't substitute. It's fine if you did, but I straight away just went like this. So we've got i times z conjugate plus 3 times z is equal to 1. Now, um, cleaning up the fraction, we get i times z bar, which will pop in now as a minus bi, plus 3 times a plus bi, is equal to z times z bar. Um, now, z times z bar is a plus bi times a minus bi which is the sum of two squares, right? So it's a squared plus b squared. So the right-hand side is looking good. Um, on the left-hand side, I can expand everything out. We get ai plus b, because i squared is negative 1, plus 3a plus 3bi. And I'm going to just sort out my real and my imaginary bits. So I've got 3a plus b plus a plus 3bi is equal to a squared plus b squared plus 0i. And now I'm going to match up my real part and my imaginary part. So we're going to have a little simultaneous equations thing to solve. So my real part is 3a plus b on the left hand side and it's a squared plus b on the right hand side. And the imaginary part is a plus 3b and over here it's 0. And you can see that that's going to be the easiest place to start. So we've got 3a plus b is equal to a squared plus b squared. And we've got a plus 3b is equal to 0. So I'm going to work here and then substitute back into this one. So working with this one, I get uh, this one here. The imaginary part, a is equal to negative 3b. And substituting that over to here gives me 3 times negative 3b plus b is equal to negative 3b squared plus b squared. On the left hand side I've got negative 9b plus b is equal to 9b squared plus b squared. Negative 8b is equal to 10b squared. What does that give us now? Um, I'm going to just, no, no, don't divide everything through by b, please. Can we just not do that? We're going to get 0 is equal to 10b squared plus 8b. Um, 0 is equal to b. Let's take out a common factor, 2b times 5b plus 4, fully factorizing that. So that gives me two solutions, right? b is equal to 0 or b is equal to negative 4 fifths. But we know that a is equal to negative 3b. So a is equal to negative 3 times 0, which is 0. I'll come back to this. Um, or a is equal to negative 3 times negative 4 fifths, which gives me 12 fifths. So this would give me z is equal to 0 plus 0i, but we were told that z is not equal to 0. So this is not valid, okay? And I'd like to see that kind of working um, set out properly, right? So all of this is important, right? We want to go through and, and thoroughly show that, we, yes, we found this zero solution, but it's not a solution. Um, and if you divide through up here, if you just divide through by that b, you're losing that solution too early, right? And um, the reason I'm going on about this is actually not for this question, but it's what often happens with students in level three trig, where you mysteriously lose solutions. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. Let's go back to this. So we've basically done, so z is equal to 12 fifths minus 4 fifths i. But if you're sitting there in the exam and you think, have I made a stupid mistake, which is very possible, we're just going to check that it works, right? 
So go back to the original equation. We've got i over z plus 3 over the conjugate of z, and we want that to equal 1. So we've got i over 12 fifths minus 4 fifths i plus 3, and yes, you can probably put this in your calculator, but that would feel wrong. Okay, so cleaning this up, some good algebra practice. We've got a common denominator here of 5 and 5. So we're dividing by a fraction. We end up with 5i over 12 minus 4i plus 15 over 12 plus 4i. Um, collecting up or multiplying through to get a common denominator. Remember, all we're doing here is we're checking that this works. And chances are you mightn't have had time to do this in the exam. Maybe you did. Because I don't think they were too bad. Right, so denominator, what have I got? Well, I've got 12 squared, so 144 plus 16. So that's going to be 160. Up here, 60i minus 20 plus 15 twelves. What are 15 twelves? It's too early, I haven't had my coffee. 150, 180, how did I not know that? Okay, minus 60i. There we go. So that's looking pretty good. We've got 160. These will disappear and 160, which equals 1. I bet no one watched all the way to the end. Um, let me know if you did. Thanks for watching. I'm going to get into the integration paper later on today. But right now I have to go and give the dog her breakfast.